All right, to finalize this video, what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and do another shape so we can see how it's all done. And then we're going to make sure we clean up everything to make sure that it's the way we want it to look as we add more shapes. So the first thing I need to do is I know now I will not need these anymore, these tests, so I'm going to remove those. Then I'm going to go back into my code, and all this is based on the previous video. So I'm going to go back into my code, and I'm going to remove those comments there, just so it's not messy. That was based on the ones I previous, I just now moved. And I just want to do some cleanup here. And make sure any notes or anything that you had before is probably gone, or anything you really don't need is probably gone. And clean up some of the spaces so it doesn't look like more code than what it really is. The next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and start from all the way up here and I'm going to go ahead and try to add another shape to this whole, my whole setup now. Since I've already set up the code to be able to accept another shape, I'm going to go and create another shape. So I'm going to duplicate this shape by hitting Control D. Bring this up here and I'm going to move this over here for now. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and drag that out from the middle. So now I know that this fits on top, but I think that this one's on the bottom. Let me uh, check by selecting this. And I'm going to go to Format, and I'm going to go to Color, and I'm going to choose this dark color here. <clears throat> Let me see if this is in front. It's not in front, so I'm going to... I can co cut it and paste it, or I can come over here to this selection and drag it all the way above everything like that. So that's another way of doing it, just so I can make sure it fits. Now all I need to do is change these shape names. So this was called triangle, and this one has to be called triangle underscore end, based off of what we did in the code before. It has to be lowercase. Now all I need to do is add a drag and drop procedure to this. So I'm going to select it and insert action macro. Now, technically speaking, I should just be able to drag this over and drop it based off the code uh, that we currently have. Um, I think there's one more bit of code that we have to change down here. So this says square end. It shouldn't say that. It should say this right here object in. So I'm going to highlight this, hit control F. I'm going to search for this, but I want to replace it with object in. Find place all. Good. It was only that one. So as we can see, it's replaced here. So that should solve any issues we may or may not have. Now here's the true test us running it and seeing if it works. So if I drag it out here, it should pop back. Good. Sorry, try again. Come over here. Eh, got it. Great job. We actually have ourselves a working program. So I'm going to put these back. Um, let me make sure I have that all set up in there. Yes. Now, technically, all I need to do is do the same thing for all the other shapes. Again, uh, I take this shape. I'm going to duplicate it. Drag it up here. Hold down Control shift and drag it to the right size. Go over here to Insert. I'm sorry, Format, uh, Color and change that color and then go over here and change the name this is why I named them early to make this a lot easier for me to do now with that one named there this one's already named all I have to do is select this one and insert action macro okay now if I run this let's cross our fingers I run this if I put it over here oh it's behind I gotta fix that so I'm going to select this and bring it above the end star. I'm going to run it again. 
So if it's partially on there, it should pop back. Sorry, try again. It's anyway over here on her face. Sorry, try again. And if it's inside of there, got it. Great job. Perfect. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish the rest. And we're pretty much done with this. And so when we have all three, we can just say game over. So let me select this one, this one, and then this one. I'm going to hit Control D to duplicate. Drag them up. Bring it down. Let me pull these up a little bit. I'm dragging them to the little red line kind of align. These are automatic alignments. So I'm going to see if I can align it to the top of each of these objects or the bottom. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Right there. And then I'm going to push it over until I see the side ones. So then I'm going to hold down Shift and select all of these. Um, I am then going to go to format. I'm going to go to color and I'm going to change that one there. This one seems kind of weird, so I'm going to do this one by itself. And then I'm going to change the names of all of these to underscore end. And then all I need to do is go ahead and add the insert here. And you see the advantage of actually doing the code right? Because I have now a pipeline. It's a lot easier to do. So now what happens is if I go ahead and run this, and put that one there. And actually, let me, um, and I'm going to make the time, set the timer. So I'm going to make the time like two seconds. Oh, one thing I forgot. <clears throat> forgot to expand these. So I'm going to select all of these. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and I'm going to drag them out like this. And then I have to make sure that I, on all of these, I have the drag and drop inserted there. Okay. Now I can try it. And there we go. I got to put it in front. So let me export that, undo that, bring all of these, drag them up front, and then hit F5. Perfect. Now we have ourselves a game that can actually work. All we need to do is finalize this by saying, okay, when you have all six, then therefore you won the game. So the next thing I want to do to make this work in order for us to have some points is I want to go ahead and add another slide here. So that way I can reset everything. And you may already have a start slide or whatever, but I want to reset everything on a particular click. So I can do something like this duplicate this, select this slide, duplicate the slide, come over here, and then I don't really need any of these things here. I don't need that there. And I don't need this here. And actually, I can use this on the first slide. But in any case, this is going to be my first slide, and then I'm going to add a shape here. And 
and I'm going to go here and then change the opacity of this. Now, this one right here, I can delete, I can make disappear or whatever. I need to change this to um, and I'm going to type ready. I'm going to click on this and type ready. I'm going to highlight this, right click, change the text. To whatever. And make it bigger. Change the effects. That should be good enough. And now on this click, I'm going to go, I'm going to create a go to the next frame. So what I need to do is go back to the code. And I'm going to go up here to the top. I'll go down here and I'm going to uh, do my private points. Uh, total points as an integer. And then down here, whenever you get it, right here, I'm just going to say total points equals total points plus one. And right before the drag and drop, I'm going to type sub start. Now, in this spot, I'm going to say go to the next frame. And the way I do that is I say active slide, active presentation dot slide show window dot view next. So this will send me to the next frame. And all I need to do is connect this one, this shape, to it. So I'm going to select that shape, insert, action, macro, start. Yes. Now I have this start going on. Now in this start, I can reset everything. So now let's go ahead and reset our uh, point system. So I'm going to take this total points. Every time I start, I'm going to make the total points equal zero. OK, so then the next thing I want to be able to do is go here and down here at the bottom, I am going to go ahead and add my if statement. So <clears throat> put that there. So now this if statement says, if total points is greater than 5, then Active presentation slide two because we changed the slide from slide one to slide two. Uh, shape talk, which is going to be the bubble, and it's going to equal you win. So if it's greater than five, you you equal you it equals you win. And all the way at the top, we always set it to zero when we click on that start. And then we want to go through our presentation. So normally, what you would have from the previous part <coughs> is that this would say one. But you have to change all the ones to now two. So slide one is now slide two. So I'm going to highlight that. So let's say if this was slide one, you should probably have yours still at slide one if you're still working on the same slide. But to make sure we have slide two, I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to hit Control F. And then I'm going to find that slide one. And then I'm going to replace it with slide two, like this. And then hit Replace All. And it went throughout the document and replaced three of those. All right, now uh, let me go ahead and run this. Hit F5. Run it. All 
and there it says you win. Perfect. Now we have ourselves an ability to win, and we also have an ability to go to the next frame if we wanted to. So instead of it just saying you win, um, we can go in here and say next frame. So, so we can have a next frame that says you win. So instead of uh, this right here, if I were to duplicate this and I were to drag this down here, uh, instead of say ready, this will say you win. And if I wanted to do that, then I can go back to my code and utilize what we did up here and just go to the next one. Instead of saying you win, just go to the next frame, the next slide. And remember, in that start button, I can also reset these back to their start position. So hit F5, run this. Keep in mind, we still have this here. And we also have the ability to say try again from before. And if you don't all the way put it in there, it's going to reset. And then it says you win, and it pops to the next frame. So there you go. We have a finished uh, product. We have a finished game. And we have a game that can actually expand and grow into something else. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment section below. Make sure you leave any com uh, uh, Make sure you look at some more of the other videos that I have up there. Make sure you share these videos. And make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.